Mr. Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Mr. Jordan from Ohio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Director, were you guessing or lying? The day after President Trump is shot, Secret Service spokesman Anthony Gugliami said, quote, the assertion that a member of the former president's security team requested additional security resources that the U.S. Secret Service or the Department of Homeland Security rebuffed is absolutely false. The next day, Secretary Mayorkas said, that is an unequivocally false assertion. We had not received any request for additional security measures that were rebuffed. But five days later, the Washington Post said this, Top officials repeatedly rejected requests from Donald Trump's security detail for more personnel. The next day, the New York Times said this, Mr. Guglielmi acknowledged that the Secret Service had turned down some request for additional federal security assets for Mr. Trump's detail. So which is it? Because both statements can't be true. Were you guessing or lying when you said you didn't turn down requests from President Trump's detail? Hey guys, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be reacting actually live uh, to the Secret Service Director, Kimberly Cheadle, getting crushed, just absolutely crushed by Jim Jordan. Now, this is a, uh, a hearing that is taking place because of the failed assassination attempt against President Trump. We want answers. We want to know what happened. We want to know why it happened. We want to know who's involved. And uh, they're holding this hearing. This is from the Oversight Committee or the House Oversight Committee. And uh, they're just tearing into her. And the reason why I want to bring this video to you guys' attention is because I want to show you the mindset of people. And probably if you ever find yourself in a position where you may have made some mistakes, maybe you dropped the ball, don't show up like she did, right? Have some dignity, have some integrity, right? Leave there knowing, hey, I did right by everybody involved. But before I go down that road, you guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's play the video. This can't be true. Were you guessing or lying when you said you didn't turn down requests from President Trump's detail? Neither, sir. And I appreciate the question. Well, what's, what were you doing? Because those statements don't, don't jive. So what I can tell you is that for the event in Butler, there were no requests that were denied. As far as requests... Well, maybe they got tired of asking. Maybe you turned them down so darn much, they said, not worth asking. How many times did you turn them down ahead of that? I think that it is important to distinguish between what some people may view as a denial uh -oh. uh, of a, an asset or a request. Well, is Mr. Not... Guglielmi your spokesperson? Uh-oh. He, he's about to give her the receipts, right? And listen, the, the, the reason why she's going to get so much heat in this um, committee is not even it's more about the fact that she keeps lying. Right. And their unwillingness to take responsibility. It makes people dig into her even more. If she had just came out and just her first sentence out of her mouth when they first interviewed her before all of this, by the way, like a week ago, it should have been the Secret Service absolutely failed. We failed to pr protect President Trump. I take full re responsibility. You know, if she had came out with that, they probably wouldn't have so much heat on her. But this is this is part of life. When you try to duck and not take responsibility, it comes back on you every single time. Let's keep going. He said he acknowledged the Secret Service had turned down some requests. I'm asking how many? A denial of a request does not equal a vulnerability. Well, tell me what it is. There are a number of ways that threats and risks can be mitigate, mitigated with a number of different assets, whether that be through personnel, whether that be through technology or well, other well, resources. Well, tell the committee which it... Yeah, so listen, this is the problem of today's world, right? Common sense has gone out the window. Common sense would probably say, yeah, President Trump probably has... Uh, he, he holds the most rallies. He's probably, um, you know, at risk the most because he's the guy who assassinated the general in Iran. And we have confirmed threats of Iran looking to assassinate him. And because he holds rallies outside, he's absolutely more vulnerable than someone who holds rallies inside. So taking all of that into account, why would I reject any request from his team. By the way, this is the same administration that rejected 
RFK Jr.'s Secret Service request. RFK Jr., okay? RFK Jr. has yet to have Secret Service assigned to him until the failed assassination attempt on Donald Trump and until President Trump came out and said, hey, you guys need to give him Secret Service too. Then the administration said, okay, fine, we'll, we will assign it to him. Th this is when politics gets into people's minds, right? And it pretty much deletes all common sense, right? And so she's in here giving us this whole uh, runaround about, well, a rejected uh, Secret Service um, does not equal a vulnerability. Come on, are we stupid or what? They asked for additional help in some form or another. You told them no. How many times did you tell them no and what did you tell them no to? Again, I cannot speak to specific incidents, but I can tell you in general terms, uh, the Secret Service uh, is judicious with their resources based on... What does some requests mean? How many times? Some indicate requests is plural. So more than once they asked for additional help and you turned them down. What they asked for and how many times did you turn them down? Pretty basic questions. So again, without having all of the details in front of me, sir, what I can tell you is that there are times- You didn't get briefed on how many times you- Listen, I served in the military. She knows how many times. She knows how many times. There's no question. She's already gotten with her team. She knows all the facts, but she's not going to show up to the committee. Listen, these people who are always called to do hearings, it doesn't matter what side of the political aisle they're on. They're never going to answer questions because any questions that they answer could be used against them to basically prosecute them. So they're not going to plead. They're not going to say, oh, well, I plead the fifth, but they're just not going to answer questions directly because it could be used against them. Now, in this situation, when we're talking about the life or death of a former president, I think we should at least have some type of humility. Can you give us some type of direct answers? And she's just unwilling to to do so. Just look at her face. The Trump detail when they asked for additional help. I'm, I'm sorry. You didn't get briefed on that before you came to this hearing, knowing you were going to get asked that question. What I can tell you is that in generic terms, when people when when details make a request, there are times that there are alternate ways to cover off on that threat or that risk. But that's not what he said. He said they were denied certain requests, some I, requests. I, this I, is your I, spokesperson, not me talking. This is the Secret Service talking. I and, it, and what a change from absolutely false, unequivocally false to, oh, by the way, there were some times where we didn't give them what they wanted. That's a huge change in five days. And the fact that you can't answer how many times you did that, that's pretty darn frustrating, not just for me, but for, for the country. Yeah, spot on. And, and this is why usually they don't want people towards the bottom doing any type of interviews because they're usually honest. You know, there was a thing in the military that we had. So like they used to tell us, if you really want to find out whether a leader is doing its job, don't go talk to the leader or his first line, you know, um, su subordinates. Go talk to people at the bottom. Go talk to people in the middle. Right. Don't go talk to his second in command because he's just going to give it to you straight. Right. He's going to give you the whole PR answer. And so uh, that's what happened here. It blew back on them because. A reporter asked uh, one of the people in charge, but not someone at the top, not someone at her level, someone a little bit lower. And they were truthful because I'm telling you, if they brought every person in the chain of command and had them testify, I'm telling you, there'd be so many contradictions and you'd find out the real truth. But she's not going to do that. I hear your frustration. Let me ask you this. Were any of those requests denied to President Trump's detail after you knew about the Iranian threat? What I can tell you, again, I don't know the specifics, is that there are times when we can fill a request. It doesn't necessarily have to be with a Secret Service uh, asset or resource. We can fill that request with locally available assets. You spoke resources. to anyone at the White House since July 13th? Yes, I have. Who'd you talk to? I have briefed the president and the vice president. Talk to the first lady? No, I have not. Talk to the White House staff, anyone in the White House communications? No, I have not. Have you talked to the counter sniper who took the shot that took out the bad guy? Yes, I have. And can you tell us about that conversation? I would not want to reveal conversations that I've had with my employees.
But that's exactly the kind of information the American people want to know, American people who pay your salary. I understand. This is an ongoing investigation. And I Who's all doing the investigating at Secret Service? I know the Inspector General, but is there also an internal investigation in addition to the Inspector General? We are. Yeah, she, she's not answering any questions. She probably won't. Uh, you know, this is just a, really a, a tragedy, an embarrassment for all American people. Uh, it's an embarrassment mindset-wise because the first principle, if you really want to grow, if you really want to be the best version of you, you got to take some level of responsibility. And she's just skirting around all the answers, you know, not really taking any type of responsibility. Um, and, you know, it, it's not easy sitting in that chair. I mean, I, I'm sure we would all agree to that. But it, it just shows you how politics, it has corrupted these agencies. Right? Secret Service is supposed to be unbiased. CIA, unbiased. FBI, unbiased. They're not. They're ran by politics. The people at the top are political. A mission assurance investigation internally, yes. You know what it looks like, Director? It looks like you won't answer some pretty basic questions. It looks like you got a 9% raise and you cut corners when it came to protecting one of the most important individuals, most well-known individuals on the planet. A former president, likely the guy's going to be the next president. It looks like you guys were cutting corners. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, so you guys seen that. I mean, <laughs> this is why people don't trust the government. This is why you have conspiracy theories. Uh, this is why you have people who are angry because we can't get a direct answer out of you. And if we can't get a direct answer out of you, what are we left to actually believe? What are we left to think? You know, and this is why the way they've handled this from the jump is absolutely unprofessional. You know, this is how crazy it is. You today can get information, breaking news, right on X, faster than you can on CNN and Fox. On X, there was so much information that was that ended up being true, and we knew about it on X before they even came out and acknowledged it. And so the problem these agencies have is there's no more of acting like nothing didn't happen and they could just drag their feet and you know they can control the narrative. They're social media today. Now, obviously, another part of social media is there's a lot of fake stuff going around, too, right? But this is why it's so important when we're in this technology age that you just got to come out and be very direct and clear. Hey, Secret Service, we failed that day. That's the first thing. Secondly, we failed because we didn't secure that roof. Boom. Third, we didn't really handle the re request from the uh, Trump team when they asked for additional s security. Four, his main primary security team was not even with him that day, so we assigned other people. Like, they could have said these things from day one, and that would have given us clarity. And because there was no clarity, you have all this blowback. So, guys, it, it, I'm, I'm hoping you would never find yourself in a position where you have to answer questions under pressure like this. But I can tell you, life is very interesting this way. Anytime you find yourself under pressure, the best thing to do is to be direct, be honest, and exercise the integrity that you have inside of you. So that's my mindset on this video. What do you think about it? What do you think about her response? What do you think about this entire situation? Jim Jordan, I mean, this guy, he doesn't let up, right? Um, I appreciate his sternness. Um, you know, this is not a joking manner, so I know that's why he's very serious. Um, but I want to hear from you guys and more in the comments section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. I'll see you in the next one.